Let's control our spindle with one of these. Hello fellow CNC nuts and welcome. Today I'll be installing this RS485 adapter to control my spindle under Mac 3. I've removed all my previous control, wiring and relays and with this adapter I'll be able to turn the spindle on and off as well as set the speed and all with just two wires. The best part of this is it's not dependent on any particular control hardware like for instance the Gecko G540 I used in a previous episode for controlling the spindle's speed. This makes a universal control method for the Hunyang VFD drives and could be a good option for your machine. The RS458 adapter used in this video is available from multiple suppliers and is incredibly cheap. Now to install it, I'll be using these instructions here provided with the plugin. I'll only be installing basic functionality as that's all I'm interested in. I believe when installing something like this it's best to do the basics first and then once you've got them going continue on to more advanced features. So this particular plugin has been around for quite a few years. A big thank you to the developer of it for sharing it with those of us in the CNC community. So let's have a look at how to do it. To make the install easier I drop this folder here onto my desktop. It contains all the files I need to get this up and going. In the Mac 3 folder, here are the three files. First one is a Microsoft Visual C file. And I've already got it installed on my machine. If you haven't got it on yours, you'll need to install it. Next, I have the VFD plugin. I'm going to select it, right click and go copy. I can now come down here to explore and under the C drive I've got a Mac 3 folder and in that folder is a plugins folder. Go right click and go paste. And that's the plugin installed. This is the last file we need to install. It's the driver for this particular USB to RS485 adapter. I tried a prolific one but I had issues with it. I've decided to go with this particular one. Simply double click on the driver file, go install and that's it all done ready to plug in the USB adapter. But we won't be doing it quite yet. So here's my RS485 adapter and I've connected it by two wires back to my VFD. They connect to the plus RS and minus RS contacts in the VFD and it doesn't matter if you get them around the wrong way it won't hurt anything it just won't work. So if it doesn't work one way you can always try reversing the polarity. Now one thing is important to note this cable here while it's shielded I'm using the shield as a screen not to connect the signal. There are two wires inside this cable. The RS485 protocol is a balanced circuit. It needs a twisted pair of wires like this here. In theory it doesn't actually need to be shielded but it's not really going to hurt. The important thing is if you're going to use a shielded cable don't use one that has a outer shield and a single wire in it. You need one with two wires on the inside and then you can just ground that outside shield. To help I've made another drawing of how it connects and I'll put that on my website for you to download. With that connected we can now plug that into our USB hub here and we can move on to the next step. I need to check the VFD is correctly configured. First, register 0 needs to be set to 0 to enable changes. 
registers 1 and 2 need to be set to a value of 2. This enables commands on RS485 port of the VFD. Next we move to register 163. We're going to set that to 1. And that's the VFD address that we entered into MAC3. Then register 164, we're going to change to a 1. And 165, we're going to set to a 3. Don't worry about it. All this information is in the document that accompanies the plugin. Once I've finished, I go back and relock the VFD by changing register 0 back to a 1. This prevents accidental changes. So when that adapter is plugged in, the laptop will find our adapter and load the drivers for it. We can now come over here to the start, right click my computer, go down to properties, hardware, device manager. There are several ways of getting to the device manager, but I find that one the easiest. Depending on what version of Windows, of course, there may be different methods of doing it. But here's our new driver, a US serial CH340 driver, and it's COM3. We need to remember it's COM3, and we need to check what the port settings are. In this case, they're 9K6, 8-bit, no parity, one stop bit. We'll go OK. We can now start Mac 3. We go to Config, Config Plugins. Here's our VFD drive plugin. We're going to go Enable and then go into Config. Now here's our COM port. I'm using COM port 3. This number must match the COM port number that we found when we checked our device driver. In my case, it was COM port 3, but yours might be COM port 1, 2, or even 4. We want our board rate to be 9600, and our VFD address to be 1. Now, there are other parameters here that you can fill in, and the documentation shows you all about that, but I've chosen to keep mine nice and simple. Go OK. And this is why we needed to have our adapter connected to the VFD drive before we proceeded. Because now the plugin goes and reads some various registers off of the VFD drive. In this case, register 11, 4, and 5. Check that these are correct, and in my case they are, and go yes. OK. And now we can proceed on. Now we're going to come over here to config again, and we're going to go down to spindle pulleys. I'm just going to select pulley 1, minimum speed of 0, maximum speed of 2400, and a ratio of 1. Click OK. Come back into config, and go ports and pins. We need to look at output signals. Here we have six output ports, ports 1 through to 6. Select one of the ones you're not using. I'm going to select output number 6. I'm not going to change anything here, I'm going to leave it disabled, but I'm just going to choose to use output 6. We can come to spindle setup. We need to uncheck disable spindle relays, and then we need to give it an output number. I'm going to call it output 6. Now I could have just left it at output 1 because I'm not using that one either at the moment. But the chances are one day I will want to use it and it will conflict with this. If I pick output 6, I think it's very unlikely it will ever conflict. And I almost forgot, while you're doing the disable spindle relays, don't forget to come down here to general parameters. 
you have a spin up time which I'll make 3 and a spin down time which I'll make 10. I'm going to enter those figures in both the clockwise and the counterclockwise even though I'm only using the clockwise. I see no reason for the spindle to run backwards. This is the time here, the spin up time is the time it takes for the spindle to get up to speed and stabilize and this is the time it takes for the spindle to stop spinning. Go OK. We should now be ready to give this a test but before we do that I'll just go config and I will save my settings. Let's take Mac 3 out of reset and if we come over here to spindle and we click on this we'll find nothing will happen. It won't turn on and that's because we don't have a spindle speed specified. I'll just uncheck that. Let's come up over here to MDI and we'll enter an MDI command S10,000. Go enter and now we have a speed set here. This time when I push spindle it will start the spindle turning. And when I click it again it'll go off. Let's run up and down the speeds. Because I've got this set at 10,000 RPM, each increment will be 10% or 1,000 RPM. So here we go, 11,000, 12, 13, etc. Until we finally reach maximum speed. I'll just hit the reset button and it'll come back to our 10,000 level. Now you'll actually notice that 10,000 RPM actually shows as 9,999 RPM on the actual VFD itself. I think we can live with one P RPM difference. And we can go down as far as 6,000 RPM. If I go any lower, it shows a lower figure here but the VFD is programmed not to go below that figure. And again, I can come back up again. It works a treat. Did you notice the extra bit I did that isn't in these instructions? That's the one, the disable spindle relays. They're not mentioned in here, but it is really important you do it. If you don't, you won't be able to turn the spindle on and off. And I think that's where a lot of people come to grief when trying to install this plugin. It's a small thing, but it makes a big difference. So go back, watch that bit of the video, and make sure you implement that on your installation. Well, that's all there is to it. If you want, you can use this plugin to monitor the spindle's current usage and display it on your screen. I'll post links to the various resources used in this video. While setting up this plugin, I did have some trouble with my RS-485 adapter. I brought a new one and after replacing it, the problems went away. When I opened the adapter, I found the USB serial chip was unmarked and I find it hard to believe that a company like Prolific would not label their circuits. The Prolific 2303 chipsets are widely used in circuits and are good, but there are also copied versions of them out there. The same applies to the FDTI 232 chipsets, so be careful when buying. I also noted that the build quality of the adapter was not as good as the new adapter. Now the adapter only cost me a few dollars, so it's no big loss. And it may be genuine, I honestly don't know. I might just have been unlucky. The new adapter uses a CH304 chipset and as far as I've managed to find out nobody actually copies this one probably because it was so cheap in the first place it isn't worth the hassle of copying the drivers work with Windows XP all the way up to Windows 10 so you should be good to go on this okay well that wraps it up for this week I hope you found it interesting and maybe you'll add RS-485 control to your spindle if you'd like more information on this video, why not check out my website, www.
www.cncnuts.com. All that remains for me to do is to thank you for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe, and I'll catch you next time. Cheers!